Good morning, friends. Welcome to our homestead. We've got a few cool things with our solar system to show you today. One of those is the installation of this new adjustable bright mount rack. It adjusts from between 25 degrees and 45 degrees. And then we are also going to be talking about our brand new Sirius 415 watt solar panels. We're gonna talk about where they're made and we are going to install them and take a look at how they perform on what looks to be a perfectly clear and sunny Texas day. Let's get going. All right, check it out. These are really nice looking solar panels. They are black on black. And I flipped one of these panels around to show you the back. These are bifacial panels. And you can see this beautiful kind of bluish black look on the back of it. Although you're never gonna really see the back, this is pretty cool looking. But the most important part is how this panel performs being bifacial and how much extra gain you will get from this back. Let's get this bright mount together first. If you've seen my video on that or you know, already know how to do it, skip ahead in the video to see our installation of the panels. But for this bright mount, all you are going to need is basically three tools, a four millimeter Allen key, a six millimeter Allen key, and then a socket set. Here's my old bright mount, the one that is non-adjustable. You can see it in front of my big array here. On either side, we are putting one section of the new bright mount. So I've got my bases, my concrete in my sauna tubes right there. I've got one of the arms fully assembled. I still have my concrete mixer out here from doing it the other day, but I've got all four set. I've got the other two over here. Of course, when you're doing this and setting your concrete anchors in, make sure you've got enough space to the edge. This is fine and that your bracket is facing forward. Somebody's helping me out here, but he looks a little lazy. Here's the box that comes in. I'm gonna show you how to assemble one of the arms. First thing we're gonna do is take out the adjustable arm. We're gonna adjust it, and it's really nice. It's got these laser engraved degree markers on it. We're gonna adjust it to the degrees that we want. For us, we're gonna set it at 35, since we are at a 32 degree latitude. Tighten these set screws so it stays there. Okay, we're gonna take one of these long square beams here. We are going to add to it one of these small brackets and then a large bracket. All these holes on this beam are drilled equally. So one of these small brackets goes at the top and one at the bottom. It doesn't really matter, but when you assemble it, you will connect this adjustable arm to this small bracket at the bottom. There are three sizes of bolts that come in the package. The longest one here is for this portion. So in some instances, you might need an extension for your socket wrench to get into some tight spaces. So I guess you can add that to the tool list. Next, we're gonna flip this down so the brackets are facing the bottom, and we are going to connect the rail brackets through. Now these already have a bolt attached to them, which is nice. The one on the bottom, it's gonna go exactly like this. Just do the same on the top, except the bracket clamp is going to face outward on this one while it faces inward on the bottom one. Now we're gonna take one of our medium length bolts and one of our short bolts. The short bolt is gonna go for the bottom adjustable arm right here. Just put it in here, put this skinnier portion in the small bracket now don't tighten this all the way because you are going to need it to adjust it when we get it on the foot bracket that's on the concrete base. Then we have this other short beam here with two holes, one at the top. This one at the top goes in the large bracket on the arm assembly. Again, don't tighten this one fully because you're going to need to adjust it. Let's get our full arm assembly into place. We've got two holes in the back for this beam and one for the adjustable one here in the front. This bright mount rack is really easy to install. Although some people say it's a little extra work doing these concrete bases, but that's fine with me. It didn't take that much work. There's some other systems out there that I'm gonna check out and hopefully showcase for you in the future here on the channel. Also, don't forget to put a bolt through the hole on the adjustable beam so that in case these set screws let loose, it's got something to stop it. Something else to keep in mind too, do not tighten down your concrete anchors fully until your concrete is set and it's got the proper amount of days for the concrete that you bought to set up properly. Last part is to put on your support rails. This is pretty self-explanatory. This ridged portion here goes up and the back of this little clamp is gonna ride in this channel right here. 
Okay, it's time to start getting the panels on. Now in the Bright Mount kit also, it comes with your panel clamps and also your bonding clips. And these will go underneath these so that it bonds everything together. It's got these little sharp pieces on here and it'll scratch the aluminum and bond everything together with the panels. Also in the Bright Mount kit, you get these wire management clips, which is nice. The original kit didn't have these. But you're also going to need to purchase these, which is for your grounding conductor. And I will link these, they don't come with the kit. I'll link these separately in the description below the video. My mistake, they did put two ECG clamps in the package. So we've got two of these, you don't have to buy any extras. Before I mount these serious panels, let's talk about where they are made, which is important. And also we're gonna talk about the specifications for each panel. So these serious panels are made right here in Texas, down outside of Houston, I believe, and they employ 100 or 150 workers. Although this company is not an American owned company, it's a Turkish owned company, they are bringing jobs here to the States. The company actually has a really great video that shows the assembly facility here in Texas. So go check that out. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, these panels are 415 watt bifacial panels. Now the back is rated for about 300 watts, but you're never gonna get that. It's probably gonna be about an extra 120 watts. The voltage open circuit on these for the front face is 37.42. So when you're doing your calculations and adding your panels, you're gonna need to accommodate for that bifacial gain, especially in the winter time when you have colder temperatures and your voltage is going to spike. So take a look at that max voltage that your inverter can handle and then calculate accordingly. It does state that these can produce about 539 watts with that bifacial gain added in. So be careful and remember that when doing your calculations. I know I'm repeating myself, but it's important so that you don't fry an inverter. Let's get these in place. If you are interested in these panels or the Bright Mount racks, please check the links below the video. And right next to those links, I do have a coupon code for $50 off. And actually, they're not that heavy either. They're only about 47 pounds a piece. And all you're gonna need is that six millimeter Allen wrench to put them on. Aluminum, scraping on aluminum is like nails on a chalkboard. As you can see, we don't have any reflective surface underneath where our new panels are going to go. That's because I didn't have bifacials before. However, I will be adding a layer of rock or something white colored and kind of reflective to see how we can boost up the power on those panels. I'll be doing that video in the future sometime. So subscribe and stick around on the channel to see more videos like that. Here's a little trick I like to use when putting these panels on if you're by yourself and you've got a middle clip like this that goes between two panels. Add this to your toolbox, duct tape. Because when you're trying to put this on and put the next panel on, you have to have this loose, but it just falls down and it makes putting this other panel next to it on extremely difficult. So just put it up here, tape the top to the panel, and then you can slide the other panel right underneath. As you can see, the sun is coming up rapidly. It's about 9.30 in the morning and the sun is coming up over the trees. They are in full sun, but it's not direct sun. So I'm gonna wait to test them until about noon. So now we've got full sun on these panels, we are going to check the voltage on them. And they should be producing pretty close to full right now. They're at 33.2 volts. That's about a volt and a half below what they can produce, but it is really hot out here today. It's almost 100 degrees, so that's gonna lower it a little bit. Now, one of the really cool things about these panels is that they have a lower voltage than most panels of the same size. So most panels of these same sizes are about 48 volts up to maybe about 51 volts, give or take. So that lower voltage on these panels is key to actually being able to run more of these panels in series into an inverter like mine. I have the EG4 6000 XP. And then in turn, current on these is about 30% higher or more than panels of similar size. The current on these are a little over 13 amps. So just think about those numbers when you are configuring your strings for your specific inverter. Now I'm gonna flip one of these panels over in this bright sunlight and see what it produces. When handling these panels in the sun, use gloves because that black really absorbs the heat really fast. 
So if you actually flip these over, you're gonna get about the same voltage. I've got about 32.7 volts. If we flip the panel back over, we're not gonna get that same voltage and then subsequently wattage out of it. But if we have some sort of white covering on the ground, you're gonna be able to maximize that bifacial gain as much as you possibly can. And mid-construction project, as you can see, I've only got three panels on my bright mount mount. And that is because four of these serious panels will not fit on one bright mount. So you're gonna have to only mount three. So on my two mounts that I have here in front of my big array, I will only be able to get six panels. So I did line things up pretty good. So if I change the angle on my new setup to match the one on the old setup, I may be able to bridge between the two. However, I still won't get my full eight panels that I wanted on the two bright mounts. I might be able to get seven. We'll see how it works out and how I can configure it. We'll see you in a second. Well, there it is. I've got seven panels on there. I know it looks like I can get eight with a little space on the ends, but I can't. They are just a touch too wide, probably only about four inches. So just make sure if you get these serious panels and two bright mounts, then you can only fit seven on there. So we've got the seven panels up. I'm pushing about 233 volts through it right now with a one series string of seven panels. But I should be well within my parameters for the 6000 XP. It's so hot and sunny out here today. I'm wearing something that I don't normally wear, but these are great for keeping the sun off your neck and your face. It's a great tool for the homestead that I'd think about investing in if I was you. Let's head inside and see what we are pulling through from this array on our 6000 XP inverters. All right, inside where it's a little bit cooler. Now let me show you what's coming into our master inverter right here from both strings. We've got PV2 connected. It's right around the 230 volts I calculated. It should cycle to PV1, hopefully. If not, I can come down like this, find it. There, PV1 is at 331 volts. Unfortunately today, those clouds rolled in and I cannot get it up above about 790 watts here on the uh, second PV array that I just put in for you. So if my calculations are correct, at 232 volts at 13.9 amps, I should be around 3200 watts coming in. So that's well underneath the 4000 for one of the MPPT charge controllers inside the 6000 XP. And remember, it's got two, so you can put up to 8,000 watts of solar into your 6000 XP. I'm so excited to have American-made panels on the property. If you have any questions about any of our equipment, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. And remember, I have all of the equipment and the tools that I use to do all of my solar here on the property listed in the description below the video, along with that coupon code that I mentioned earlier. Now go click on this video right here, which is our installation video for the EG4 6000 XP. Have a beautiful blessed day. See you next time. Bye.